yesterday we discussed up to hasti hasta and sopana that is stairs and balustrades of a temple now usually what happens in the agama texts these i mean even vastu shastra granthas these uh, adjuncts whichever are being defined and described they are described at the chapters uh, with, to which they are related for example you get the description of pranala in a, as a continuation in the chapter of adhisthana itself because pranala will be either fixed just above the adhisthana or along with the adhisthana likewise there are many other adjuncts uh, which are associated with some part parts now usually the prastara will be the <coughs> ceiling of the temple the uh, uh, though it is on the, the, the of the trivarga though the lower moldings uttara and valabhi kapota uh, are not extended as the complete ceiling the last one vajana is the uh, outer face of the ceiling stone ceiling slabs so the vitana or the ceiling is associated with the prastara now vitana means the inner part of the ceiling that is uh, as we know once you cover the uh, entire structure with stone slabs the side faces will be uh, decorated as the vajana vebhu the kapota hope you people remember about vajana which i told while discussing prastara so that is why vajana is also called as prachadanasya asya prachadana means one which is which covers the structure and asya is the outer face so prachadanasya asya is another name for vajana which covers the entire structure and wherever the uh, uh, we need the ceiling there we have what is called as vitana the decoration of vitana is shown the most popular kind of vitana which, which we see in almost all the temples uh, and which is elegant and easy to make is the nabhichanda here in this picture we'll see this nabhichanda vitana in the last i will show you the construction methodology picture we can see here stone slabs are placed at three different levels see the first level uh, is is placed you know uh, uh, somewhat in a, in a turned a square shape above that you will have the regular uh, placement of the stone slabs here and the center part will be covered with a capstone many times this capstone will have a hole to which a lotus bud or something will be fixed the outer part will be either dressed uh, uh, with uh, uh, mortar uh, or if it, if it is required otherwise they will also decorate it with uh, other kinds of uh, stone decorations slabs and other things so as this particular vitana the ceiling will have a central opening and it is covered with a, a you know a, a lotus bud or something that is why it is called as nabhi chanda nabhi as we know it it has really nabhi means belly button and chanda means one which is closed so it will it will have a closed hole or a opening so that is what is the meaning of nabhi chanda this is the popular uh, kind of vitana which we find in many of the chola temples in the garbhagrihas and a various such places this is ashtadik palaka phalaka now this is uh, though it is not a particular uh, variety mentioned in the text what happens when the text says mention what are the things you can decorate the ceiling with it says that you can decorate the ceiling with various pictures like adik uh, palakas and the various forms of deities and all those things it describes so that by that we can infer that atadik palaka phalaka is one kind uh, which is used and this was very much popularized by the ganga and nalamba rulers even in all the ganga and nalamba temples we find this atadik palaka phalaka and kalyan chalukya and hoyalas also used atadik palakas in their vitana but slightly with a different uh, presentation their uh, their kind of representation was slightly different but we find some figurines in the ceiling from the badami chalukya in days itself where uh, in the badami caves if somebody has visited badami caves we can see a lot of you know gandharva couple some uh, some uh, deities like indra 
uh, varuna vayu all these things though not all the arctic varasa some of the major uh, deities uh, brahma and the swan all these things are seen in the vitana so arctic palaka phalaka is another kind of vitana which is usually uh, it can be seen majority of the times it is seen in the uh, guda mantapa the central bay of the guda mantapa there are occasional cases where arctic palaka phalaka is also seen in the uh, antarala or the, the shukanasi part of the temple in the antarala also we find but it is very rare after ganga and nolamba we see that uh, many of the nayakas the kaladi nayakas uh, they have used the same pattern of uh, uh, carving ashtadik palakas in the uh, ceiling so this is one kind another kind of vitana now this is the most ornate decoration which is called as the bhuvaneshwari uh, bhuvaneshwari is probably it migrated from the kalinganagara style because that is widely used in the kalinganagara temples and this was popularized by kalyan chalukyas and the hoysalas now there will be a confusion between abhichanda and bhuvaneshwari sometimes what happens in the hoysala period even the nabhichanda was very much exuberantly decorated with a lot of intricate carvings so there is a there is a common confusion among the scholars to call that also a bhuvaneshwari but the plan of bhuvaneshwari usually will be circular it will not be like the nabhichanda of you know uh, uh, squares which are being turned so it will not be like that it will be a circular uh, on plan and this is the bhuvaneshwari which is very ornate and very popular and even in this bhuvaneshwari the central part will have a dropping kind of uh, bud and there is a reference of what is called as kadali mukula kadali mukula means a plantain bud uh, so the kadali mukula dalas can be carved that is what is mentioned in the vastu shastra granthas and this kadali mukula sometimes it resembles or even the lotus bud but however we find this kind of uh, decoration in the center of the bhuvaneshwari so if the this the plan of the vitana is like the uh, uh, turning uh, squares it is nabhi chanda if it is circular then you see it is domical and circular it is circular and plan and it is domical so this becomes bhuvaneshwari another popular kind of uh, uh, vitana we find in the temples are the padma shilas now padma shilas are found in various places in various types in some temples we find uh, as as seen in this picture rows of petals uh, roses carved uh, sorry lotus carved blo blossomed lotus carved they are carved in uh, rows and such plants are arranged uh, in uh, in uh, wherever it is necessary in hoysala temples what happens if the central bay has a bhuvaneshwari all the surrounding uh, base of the in the aisle on the, uh, the on the either sides of the bhuvaneshwari they may have what is called as this uh, padmashila so we can find the padmashila there is another kind of representing padmashila where uh, you have only one uh, padma of a larger uh, size carved in the center of the ceiling so if the center of the ceiling has just one padma, a huge lotus then it is called as a padma shila so padma shila can be done in rows or a single padma shila can be carved usually by vijayanagara period as the uh, as i said the building activity increased lot very very uh, magnanimously so they started having one huge uh, padma dala carved in the center of the for the central bay and in some minor temples we see it is very roughly dressed and not very elegant in its presentation but padma shila will be present and another uh, p -p last of the vitana variety mentioned is the varna chitra varna chitra is usually mentioned even in uh, earlier texts like uh, mayamata also but uh, mostly we find the varna chitras mentioned in uh, later texts like vishnu dharma utra purana and even later texts like uh, tantra samachaya so what happens during the vijayanagara period especially this varna chitra was popularized it does not mean it was not known in the earlier days we all know that uh, the inner uh, uh, walls of uh, rajarajeshwara temple in tanjavur has uh, paintings on them and in the badami we can find a lot of traces of uh, paintings done and in earlier days many times even the stone carvings 
they are uh, uh, decorated with uh, paints and as they were all natural paints extracted from the vegetable and floral sources uh, they were very elegant and it was not like uh, the modern day oil paint which uh, just uh, uh, covers the uh, intricate, intricate carvings it would not be like that so the uh, decorating of the ceiling with varnachitra has been popular from the early days uh, we see it in ba badami caves we see it in ellora 16 cave kailasa cave we see likewise we see it uh, no. but it was again it became very popular during the vijayanagara period the reason was as i said as uh, you know as the quantity increases uh, in some work so the temple building activity became very 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 uh, huge project for the vijayanagara rulers at that time they could not uh, give more time just for car carving delicate flowers and all those decorations so at that time they they had this they had adopted a inverted ceiling system from the western uh, uh, architecture with that usually the central uh, bay of the mahamantapa would have a very flat uh, ceiling of stone slabs and that would be uh, applied with uh, mortar sudha karma as it is called mortar with lime mortar and it would uh, make it would appear as a clean neat canvas for doing the varnachitra on that various themes are painted and we find we find such uh, uh, paintings which are very intact in lepakshi hampi urupaksha temple and even in uh, tamil nadu we see that uh, in some temples where we have this uh, ceilings painted with varnachitra so these are all the varieties of vitana we find in the temples the next uh, <clears throat> adjunct which is uh, which uh, we have to know in the, the temple architecture is the dwara bandha now while discussing the wall joinery and all these things the texts mention that dwar how a dwara bandha has to be uh, placed to form and everything but the decoration of the dwara bandha is invariably left to the freedom of the artist or the sculptor and we also observe that uh, it changes from time to time uh, and but there are some very common features which we find throughout so what happens uh, in the tamil dravida shaila uh, style shaili that uh, which was popularized by uh, pallava and chola uh, we see that majority of the dwaravandas as you see in this particular picture they have they were decorated with architectural members so what are this architectural members see we see bitti padas we see nakula padas it has a kapota over it another kapota sometimes it will have shala kuta panjara here so bitti padas on the either side so the dwara bandhas usually of the tamil dravida order will invariably be decorated with the uh, architectural members and motifs as the decoration there may be a few exceptions Uh, it is not a hard and fast rule but again there are exceptions for all uh, uh, <coughs> cases but here in badami chalika that is the karnataka dravida shaila karnataka dravida shaila we observe that dwara the dwara bandhas will linearly be have multiple shakas like uh, trishaka dvishaka chatushaka panchashaka we can get shakas up to navashaka that is the maximum number of uh, shakas we can find and Uh, nolambas especially they as I, i was mentioning this while uh, discussing the chalavatainas also they had this practice of using a separate softer stone for making the dwarabandhas jalavatainas and some parts of the prastara wherever they wanted to do intricate carving so these dwarabandhas usually nolambas gangas and many of the badami chalakyan uh, dwarabandhas common feature we find is they used to have the nidhi figures at the pedyas pedyas are the lower portion of the dwara bandhas so this is the dwara bandha so this is the dwara uttara the center part is the lalata and the, uh, uh, here in the pedya we find dwa nidhi figures carved so it is shankha nidhi and padma nidhi carved on the either sides and the uh, upper part in the uttara dwara uttara we find that Uh, the lalata will invariably have the image of uh, gajalakshmi and that's a symbol of uh, prosperity and uh, you know wealth and prosperity uh, apart from that they also used to carve what is called as ashtamangalas like uh, a drum mirror a purna kumbha nandi 
so all these things were carved they were all the ashtamangalas which were carved in the lalata lalata bandha of the dwara bandhas the central one is called as lalata so now this is the usual lalata and uttara here we can see the ashtamangalas carved the central one has a gajalakshmi uh, here we can see the kalashas on the either side we have jaladevata adhishthana devatas and the pedya this is one of the most ornate pedyas from a place called hemavati uh, which is in the modern anantpur uh, district and this is the molamba uh, district and this is the hoysala lalata hoysala has a, as as you know they carved all the uh, angas very intricately and this is one of the uh, hoysala lalatas and the sculptors they were very well versed and they used to uh, bring out the life into the sculptures of the Uh, wherever they carved even miniature small sculptures even uh, minute details were meticulously displayed in this so this is a panchashaka door jam with a lalata of nolamba period here you can see there are five shakas and the outermost this thing has dwarapalas and uh, you know we have vidyadharas and all these things you know what happens the shakas also have some names based on the decoration suppose now this is a shaka with creepers uh, creepers crawls then it's called a vallimandala shaka if it will have medallions then it is called a ratna shaka if it resembles a, a pillar or a stambika that is a pillaret then it is called as stamba shaka like that whatever uh, decoration we find we may have a simha shaka bhuta shaka vyala shaka mithuna shaka anything the decoration it is based on the decoration and the shaka gets that name this is the one of the most ornate navashakas it is from uh, lakkundi uh, kashi visheshwara temple of lakkundi we find nine shakas here and as i said this if you see the center uh, shaka resembles a pillar in its uh, morphological feature so uh, four on this side four on that side so it is a Uh, navashaka dwara bandha found in uh, lakkundi here we see we see a lalata with a lalata bimba of gajalakshmi so this is a navashaka dwara bandha see sometimes the pedyas if there are more than uh, two three shakas and if there is uh, you know uh, permissible place and uh, time they will uh, display a lot of uh, figurines like uh, river goddesses like ganga and yamuna will be carved on that sometimes <laughs> along with ganga and yamuna we will see rati and manmatha on the either sides or rati on one side and manmatha on one side and uh, then we find uh, other uh, uh, se- semi celestial beings carved like vidyadharas and uh, sometimes even the dwarapalakas are shown overall it will be the, the concept of a temple has to be very uh, lively and luxurious for the appearance for whom ever visits the temple it, it shouldn't be a very dull place to be in so that is why they have taken so much of effort to decorate this uh, these adjuncts now this is the uh, dwaja stamba now there are two stambas mentioned in the, the text one is the dwaja stamba and other is the deepa stamba now in this display i am showing both the dwaja stamba as well as the deepa stamba deepa stamba usually is the stamba which is used to light a lamp and it will resemble uh, uh, a dwaja stamba in all manners some people will get confused with deepa stamba and dwaja stamba but the difference will be usually the deepa stamba will not have anything above this this phalaka see even the deepa stamba and the dwaja stamba if you observe they have all the features of a regular pillar It, it will have you know the the pitha then we have the danda the kumbha tadi mandi palaka and everything is there so this mandi will have a vacant place where you can place the deepa why in, in the dwaja stamba we will have some uh, metal attachments where, which are which they themselves are uh, signify, signifying a, a flag staff or to which a flag can be attached the main purpose of dwaja stamba is to a uh, show to which cult this uh, to which cult or to which sampradaya this temple belongs to so that is why what happens this dwaja stamba in the case of uh, shiva temples it will be called as nandi dwaja sometimes if, if it is in the vaishnava temples is called as garuda stamba 
So to denote that in the base of the Dvajastamba, uh, uh, various uh, cult icons will be carved. We can see that the engraving of uh, Nandi, Virabhadra, Ganesha, Trishula, Damaru, all these things carved in the Shaiva temples. And we see that Garuda, Anjaneya, uh, Tripundra, Urdhupundras, Shankha Chakra, all these things are carved in the Vaishnava uh, temples. So uh, on the flag staff, they can have a flag with uh, either Nandi or Garuda or some other lanchana of that particular Sampradaya. And uh, uh, after uh, some part of time when the Dvajastambhas uh, began to become very tall, uh, so at that time they also started building mantapas to support the central uh, uh, danda of the uh, Dvajastambha. And we find such uh, stambhas for, uh, built for Dvajastambhas in various uh, places. See, this is, uh, this is a Dvajastambha which is very rare and peculiar. This actually resembles the Manastambha of the Jaina cult. The Manastamba is nothing but a Dvajastamba of the Jain order, that's all. But this is in front of a Vaishnava temple with the Garuda figure in the center. Usually, the Manastamba of the Jaina tradition will have a pavilion like this, a small mandaba, which will house invariably the Brahma Yaksha. Only Brahma Yaksha can be seen in that particular mandaba of the Manastamba. So, this, uh, uh, th this is one uh, instance where the Dvajastamba is shaped in the uh, style of a Manastamba. So, if you visit a Basadi or a Jain temple, uh, if you notice, all the things will be like our regular temple only. But these are the mi some minor changes which we can uh, which we can derive from observation. So this is Bali Pita. Now many people by the term Bali itself, they will have a very negative approach towards it. They will feel it is only the offering of animal sacrifice. It is animal sacrifice is Bali. But no, Bali is just an offering. Anything you offer. You, if you offer yourself in the service of uh, the Lord, then it is also a Bali. So, offering it is called as Bali. So, Bali Pita is everybody who is a bit ritualistic in, in the household, they will know even after the regular puja, we have this concept of offering the uh, Naivedya offer to the God, first to the Bhagavatas and the Brahma Manas Putras and other uh, Vaishnava. Uh, uh, Vaishnava, uh, Bhagavad, Vaishnava Shaiva, uh, Anu, Anu, Anucharas, Ganas and everybody before we consuming it. It is done even today in the ritualistic families, they will be very much familiar with that. Likewise, there is something called as uh, offering the Bali for uh, the various, uh, you know, the Shaiva saints and the Vaishnava Bhagavatas, even the Brahmamans, Putras like Sanaka, Sanandana and everybody in the temples also. And it is, it is another way, you know, that where we respect and uh, show our uh, gratitude towards the nature. Because we have this presu presumption that this will be carried to those deities through the various kinds of birds which come and perch over it or various animals. So, therefore, uh, these are all bullies offered to the nature and environment around us. So, what happens? There is one thing called as the Pradhana Balipita, which will be to the main axis of the Garbhagraha just into the line of the main Otu sculpture and surrounding the temple there may be any number of uh, Balipetas based on the Sampradaya. Any number means it will not be very whimsical or uh, to the whims and fancies of somebody. No, that also has a Krama but uh, the number depends on the Sampradaya. In some Sampradayas they will have what is called as Ashta Balipetas. They will have Ashta Balis, eight uh, Balipetas they will have along with the Pradhana Balipeta. In some uh, there may be uh, pancha balipetas or some, in some temples there may be only one balipeta. That will be the pradhana balipeta. So like this. Uh, and sometimes what happens, the pradhana balipeta, if it is in front of the main shrine, the parivara alayas or the upadevatas which are surrounding like uh, Ganesha, Skanda, Saptamatrikas and all, they may also have a separate balipeta in front of their particular, their respective shrines. So this is the uh, balipeta which we find in the temple. Now, Balipita usually, the Vastu Shastra Gunta says, morphologically should resemble a Adhishthana. So, here we can see this particular Balipita uh, resembles what we identify as the Padma Kesara Adhishthana. So, now we see, we see a Upana here. Over the Upana, we have a small Jagati, then a Padma Jagati, another Jagati. Then we have uh, Padma Kesaras here, 
a Vritta Kumuda, above which we have a Padma Kesara, then we have a Gala Mahapati. Over the Sadhishtana, we will have what is called as the Padma Shila. Now, this Padma Shila is what we usually uh, I place in various places. The same kind of Padma Shila, we will find it below the stupi of the Shikara. The same Padma Shila, we may find it uh, below some of the minor uh, pillars or such, such structures, wherever it is necessary. Now, there will be, we, we would see that some, uh, some places, the feet of the Lord is placed over such Padma Shilas. So, this is about the Bali Peter. Now, Gopura are the Mahadwara. Gopura and Mahadwara are one and the same. The Gopuras are the Mahadwaras are the main entrances. The texts mention these with various names like Dwara Shobha, uh, uh, Dwara Prasada and all those things are the names given. And Mahadwara is the popularly known, known one. So, Gopura it is mentioned because many people, the early western scholars had two uh, kinds of uh, uh, what do they say? Interpretation of this Gopura. One, they said the pinnacle of a Gopura will have what resembles a horn of the cow. So that is why it is called as Gopura. Persevon also mentions that these were the path through which uh, you know uh, the cows were led into the townships. So that is how it got the name Gopura. Uh, it is their it is their uh, inference which we cannot completely reject or deny, but in Shastra, the term go does not always mean uh, cow only. So, it also means the movement of the body. Pura has a meaning as the physical body. So, where we have this movement of the uh, physical person happening, where people move about, that is what is called as Gopura. So, the then which gives ac access for the movement of the human being. So, this is Mahadvara the Gopura. In the early days, there were Gopuras or Mahadwaras which had, uh, which were built completely out of stone and that is why they were not very huge in their uh, forum. So, we find them even in the rocket sanctuaries of uh, Elora and uh, see both of them are from Elora. This is the Go Gopura of the Dwara, the Dwara Mahadwara of the Kailasa temple, it is from the Indrasabha, the 36th cave of Elora. But later on what happens by the late Chola period, they start building multiple uh, uh, talas in these multiple stories of the uh, Gopra, and they start making it out of brick and mortar so that there will be less weight uh, put upon the Mahadwara. So therefore, these Gopras uh, take a huger form and it reached its uh, pinnacle during the Vijayanagara period. So during Vijayanagara period, the Gopras become very, very tall and then at that point of time, it's, they, it was uh, uh, it got a name as Raya Gopura because many people may mispronounce it as Raja Gopuram, but it is Raya Gopura because the, the, the Vijayanagara rulers were invariably referred to as Rayas. And it was one kind of uh, system of building a doorway which was introduced by the Vijayanagara rulers. So it came to be called as Raya Gopura. And these Raya Gopuras invariably were hollow structures. They were not strong structures. Sometimes in some uh, 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 Gopurams, uh, especially in Tamil Nadu, we can see that it is committable from uh, one uh, tala to the another tala. There will be wooden ladders or stairs provided so, so that you can move from one tala to other tala to reach the Kalasha for during uh, Kumbhabhishekam or whatever. So, but this particular uh, Gopra from Hampi Virupaksha temple, uh, it is completely hollow. There are, uh, there, there is, there are no, you know, uh, there are no wooden planks uh, given in between the talas to differ the, to differentiate the talas. Inside this Gopra, it is completely hollow till the lower part of this, uh, what we call as the uh, Shala and Mahanasi above the uh, Gopra, Gopra talas. So this is the Raya Gopra, which we popularly seen throughout South India. See the Mahadvaras of the uh, Raya Gopras many times, as I was mentioning the other day, used to have the double Upapitas and then a Adishtana, then a Bhitti. 
the next uh, junk which is very important in the temple uh, architecture which may be inside the temple premises or the outside the uh, temple premises are the water sources there are three kinds of water sources mentioned in the texts so it is the pushkarini vapi and kupa kupa is the well proper regular well which is used only for the purpose of bathing the uh, presiding deity and for whatever which is attached and connected with the presiding deity it cannot be used by the public or it is not you know, for the utility of even the, uh, the priests or other people next the mandatory uh, mantapa which a temple should have is the vahana mantapa now vahana mantapa uh, if it is in the shiva temple it is referred to as nandi mantapa if it is in the uh, vishnu temple it is referred to as the garuda mantapa otherwise it is just vahana mantapa for various other uh, deities like we have shakta saura ganapatya uh, kaumara all these things will have their own vahana mantapa but there is a there is one beautiful thing which is mentioned in the agamas uh, which we have to observe wherever you have a nandi mantapa as it is a prani varga the pavilion will be open it will be like a shed it will be a open mantapa it will not be completely closed it will be a open uh, uh, mantapa but wherever it is a garuda mantapa it will be closed because garuda is a pakshi varga so it is in a cage it is uh, it resides in a cage so therefore the garuda mantapas are invariably uh, regular uh, uh, you know shat varga or trivarga uh, structures with uh, all the features of a vimana there are some very elegant uh, uh, garuda mantapas with all the as i said see this garuda mantapa has a upapitha then we have the bitti adishtana bitti prastara prasada everything here also it has adishtana bitti koshtas and everything so there are some really very uh, beautiful garuda mantapa so garuda will usually be housed in a closed mandapa while uh, nandi will be housed in a open mandapa this is one of the most ornate uh, you know uh, garuda mantapa from hampi and i think everybody everybody will be very familiar with it uh, so this is the garuda mantapa of the vijayavitla temple though it is a vahana mantapa the present the presentation itself is like a vahana or a ratha so it, it uh, implies it is being drawn by the elephants and this is a very uh, if you go and observe the uh, all the architecture members which you find in a main temple are carved on this uh, vahana mantapa everything in miniature form like that see we have kumbha panjaras carved we have uh, uh, small stambikas carved koshtas kar so like that it is a very this is actually a shri bhoga adishtana given for the this particular uh, vijayavitla temple is a very grand temple which you which the students of temple architecture must visit so this is about the vahana mantapa then maha mantapa maha mantapa is a concept which is known from the early days itself but again it became very popular from 11th 12th century onwards so especially the vijayanagara period they patronized a lot of maha mantapas almost all the temples uh, 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 began to have maha mantapas maha mantapa is nothing but if mukha mantapa is of one ankana this maha mantapa can be of multiple ankanas they may be square on plan or they may be uh, you know rectangular on plan uh, they may be elongated however they they the, the plan they have we have maha mantapas in many temples maha mantapas become very multi purpose for example if you want to perform kalyan utsava dol utsava any utsava pradosha puja or anything like that it is performed in the maha mantapa of that particular temple if there are no other separate mantapas uh, built then main stand centers like we may have shri rangam or madurai vijayanagara hampi uh, temples in hampi these are all main central shrines where they have separate mantapas for uh, all the rituals but in in um, some minor uh, temples uh, which are you know in the, in the suburb regions or in the villages they cannot afford to have all the mantapas separately therefore uh, the all the rituals will be uh, performed in the maha mantapa itself and maha mantapa can be a continuous 
attached part of the main shrine that is the main temple otherwise they can be independently built also for the uh, you know uh, for uh, the uh, for uh, uh, helping the pilgrim pilgrims and others so that is why we have this concept of a lot of uh, ayiram kal mandapams in uh, tamil nadu where you have huge pavilions with uh, hypostyle halls there are huge pavilions which are used for various uh, purposes uh, just not uh, uh, you know uh, religious cultural social debates everything happen in those mandapas now this is what is called as a pathal arkana now pathal arkana is one extension of the mukamantapa or mahamantapa according to the requirement where usually a mantapa is defined to have an adhisthana pillars and a vithana prasthara but pathal arkana is a mantapa without any adhisthana therefore it starts directly from the courtyard of the uh, temple that is why it is called as pathala ankana so uh, ankana usually means one particular measure of uh, of a uh, of the entire structure uh, one, like one cubical uh, 10 by 10 we say na like the 2 by 2 this is one ankana depending on the uh, measurement so pathala ankana is the extension of a mukamantapa or a mahamantapa where Uh, we find a series of pillars with a prasthara about it it will not have an adhisthana and the pillars of pathala ankana will invariably of uh, chitrakanda style and they will be very very huge and tall to serve the purpose then we have the rangamantapa rangamantapa usually will have an elevated platform serving as a stage at the rear end of the wall at the rear end of the wall we find a, 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 a stage we can see some pillars of the stage also here and front it will have an hypostylic hall the front of the this particular structure will also be decorated with some yukta stambhas and other things and here we can see that the front of the stage you can uh, accommodate a lot of audience and on the stage various uh, things like harikatha purana vachana or even uh, dance and music performances will be performed the natakas will be played and all these things are a part of the ritual in the temple so rangama ranga bhoga is a separate uh, sector where the god is served and uh, purana patana was a regular uh, feature in the temples because uh, these puranas were the media mode to which through which the the pandit varga or the scholarly people transferred the knowledge of the smritis and the grihi sutras to the lay people for the common people who could not by themselves read the grihi sutras or the uh, smritis so for them these these were taught to, through stories and uh, examples through the purana incidents so that's why purana vachana was a very important feature in the temple and rangamantapa served for that then we have the kalyana mantapa kalyana mantapa and vasanta mantapa Uh, sometimes they are built separately sometimes both serve the purpose kalyana mantapa is that mantapa where the wedding ritual of the deity is uh, conducted therefore uh, a huge amount of care was taken in executing planning and building kalyana mantapas especially in the vijayanagar period we find very beautiful kalyana mantapas in many temples and as it says as, as i said it's the wedding of the Uh, lord being performed uh, the central mantapa on this entrement uh, kalyana mantapa see in this picture you can see the, the mantapa will have an another elevated platform in the center over which the the kalyana utsava will be performed the inner pillars the inner adhisthana will be usually of the shri bhoga variety that is highly ornate the pillars also will be over ornamented and they will be very very crisply carved with a lot of uh, sometimes some deities are depicted as attending the wedding like that and it will be on elevated platform then we have the mantapa and that is also elevated so what happens it is an open mantapa on all four sides with an elevated platform in the center so that if the people are sitting inside the mantapa and if they are surrounding the mantapa also the rituals which are happening the kalyanotsava which is happening on the um, on the central part of the mantapa is visible for people who are who are 
gathered around. So this Kalyan Mantapas were built with great care and you know meticulous intricate carving. So this this Vasanta Mantapa was usually used during the Chaitrotsava time where the deities were placed in the Mantapa and uh, what we call as you know uh, uh, colored water was sprinkled over them and uh, flowers were also uh, put upon them. So that like that uh, these things was called as this is called as Vasantotsa. Vasantotsa is the ceremony where the deity is, is, is you know, uh, sprayed with uh, perfume and uh, color waters along with offering of various kinds of flowers, garlands and everything. So this is a Vasanta Mantapa. Then we have Dolotsava Mantapa and Utsava Mantapa. Dolotsava Mantapa uh, usually <coughs> will be tall structure. Dolotsava means uh, the swing festival of the god, the, where the, the deity is placed in a swing and swung. So as one of the offerings to the ritualistic offerings to the deity. So this is done and that is why Dolotsava Mantapas will be usually taller, very quite tall when compared here also you can see it is taller than the Malika surrounding it. And then uh, in the center of the Vitana of the Dolotsava Mantapa, there will be copper brass hooks provided for the swinging of the swing. So, and that, that, that thing you can understand that uh, the, the tall structure will facilitate the easy movement of the swing. So, this is the Dolotsa Mantapa. And Dolotsa Mantapa will invariably be of only one Ankana, one Mantapa with four, four pillars. Then, Utsa Mantapas are those Mantapas which are built outside the temple premises surrounding the village or the Agrahara or the Pura, wherever it is being, wherever the temple is situated. Utsava itself is a, is a ritual which facilitates the common laity to take part in the Vedic rituals. Now, whatever happens in the Sanctum Sanctorum, it is very Vedic, very pure, very sanctified. So, the common people are not allowed in. But to give this the thought of you know uh, participation and offering or serving the Lord, the various Utsavas were performed where the, the deity is brought out of the Garbhagraha through a Chalabhera and then the Utsava is performed through. So when it is being, when the procession is being taken um, in, the, in the townships or the Agraharas or, or the villages, they, it had to be placed at the stop at some points and it had to be placed to for the uh, devotees to offer their pujas. If it's a Ratha Utsava, the Ratha itself would be, would be stopped. But if they are performing a Pallaki Utsava or some such Utsava, they had to place the God at frequent inter intervals and these Utsava and Tapas served the purpose. Apart from that, the texts also talk about uh, Snapara Mantapa, where the uh, deities, Vikrahas of the Deities have been uh, cleansed and bathed on a regular basis, not as a Abhisheka or that kind of uh, ritualistic uh, uh, this thing. But the Utsar Mantapas, they are uh, usually, uh, 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 the Snapana Mantapas are usually uh, used for the purpose of cleansing the God. And they can, you can also have a Dolots, uh, sorry, uh, Tepotsava or the Utsava which happens in the uh, tank where the uh, deity is taken around in a ferry, there also you can have a central mantapa where the deity is placed and some rituals are conducted. So these are all the various Utsava mantapas we find. And this is the Malika of the temple where we find it's also called as Prakara mantapa but it's a series of pillars placed. So this is the uh, Utsava mantapas. There are also, as I said, uh, a separate Shaina Mantapa being, can be built for the performing of Shaina Utsava, but that can be done in other uh, premises also. Like this, we get uh, various uh, examples of and references and examples of Mantapas. Now, coming to the construction methodology of the temples. Yesterday, we were having a discussion regarding this, how the Bhitti is placed, seated upon. Now, we see here, the bhitti has three layers. This is the opening where the windows are fixed, the chalakas are fixed. You can notice that this is the bhakti bhitti and this is the antar bhitti. 
the bahya vitti and the antar vitti and the in between place of these antar vitti and bahya vitti is filled with the debris now wherever we we at the, especially at the terminations of the corners such stones are arranged placed see you can see that this is a horizontal stone placed to support both the uh, this thing see here also we have one such here also one such so this bears the weight of the wall and it gives complete support but it is also we can see that it has uh, a kind of uh, growing in it so this shows that the window jams were placed in it in such examples in dilapidated temples we can see some whole kind of, uh, things made is this plus i don't know if it is clearly visible there is a small hole here so this is to fix the door jams or the window panes to the this to the wall proper itself so this is how and here see can you observe that this is a stone placed horizontally while there is sunlight coming from here this is gap is completely void so this is bahya vitti sorry antar vitti and the space in between and to give strength at terminations at the places where we find windows the both the uh, antar vitti and bahya vitti are uh, fixed together through these kind of stones so this is see this is the outer part of the antar vitti usually the antar vitti Uh, the front fascia which is seen which can be seen inside the temple will be dressed and very neatly made but when it is the inner part will be like this it will not be very dressed and neat it will be undressed so this is antar vitti and bahya vitti it will be like this on the inner side the bahya vitti will be like this but on the outer side bahya vitti will have the carving of vitti padas koshtas and all these things see this is the nabichinda uh, method of building the ceiling where can you see here that there are four slabs placed like this after that four slabs are placed this thing and this continues and if it continues till uh, another two three uh, you know tiers finally we find what is called as the cap stone so this is about the construction methodology of the nabichanda actually students of architecture temple architecture especially they have to do three things one just by reading the text you cannot completely understand what the text say or what it is because application is very important sometimes there may be a description and as we all know the dialect of words though we feel it is very common in that particular context the thing may vary so uh, so by, by just reading the vastu granthas many a times we may not understand what are certain explanations the defense give for that we have to visit existing structures in existing structures the second thing we will have to visit a lot of temples observe their adjoints parts and everything the third thing we have to do is we have to visit dilapidated structures fallen structures and study how originally it was built so that we will know the construction methodology the arrangement of stone slabs use of brick and mortar so if you visit hampi you will have umpteen examples where we can see that uh, uh, bamboo beams were tied and placed to withhold the vitana mortar of uh, the vitana so like that to understand this uh, construction methodology especially if you are architects or something by profession Uh, these three things you have to do one read the texts then see the structural temple and visit dilapidated temples to understand how they were really built so this is about this is uh, an introduction into the temple architecture mm -hmm.